Okay, so here we are with a sample flight video of the Apex 2 that we just built. And I wanted to show you this just to see how it flies kind of stock standard as I set it up without making too many tunes inside the beta flight configurator. So here we are, we're just flying around and you can notice in the bottom right there, the throttle, it is very low. So you can see that it's down at around the five to 10 mark just to hover and that's really low. So I don't have too much resolution in the throttle at the moment with this uh, default settings so it was really hard to fly you can see I'm actually struggling to fight the throttle to keep the balance of either shooting too high or keeping too low and hitting the ground so it was really hard and difficult to fly but I still had fun I just punched it around the yard the front yard and the back there and uh, yeah so it was pretty good and I'll go through the beta flight configurations now just to show you how I've tuned it to make it a bit better and flyable Okay, so in beta flight, I'm just going to run through a few of the settings that I've already set up here, going through the things that I may have changed uh, from the default. So uh, you can see what I've actually set it up to get it flying for the first flight. And uh, then you can see a few things that I've uh, updated to get it working properly. So here in setup, the only thing I really did was to calibrate the accelerometer. I've already done that. It's flat on a bench. And so that's all you'll need to do here. Over on ports. I've set the Serial RX on for the UART1, which is where I've uh, soldered on the Express LRS. And also on UART6, I've set up VTX as TBS Smart Audio so that I can control the VTX from Betaflight. Over on configuration, I've left it as 4K for the PID loop. Accelerometer is on and barometer is on as well. And you can see them up here, they're enabled. And I've just put a craft name in and also the pilot name. The uh, maximum arm angle, I've let, I put it as 180 degrees so that I can arm upside down if I ever need to arm it in turtle mode and flip back over. Down here, I think I've left this as pretty standard LED strip I've left on and also the OSD on screen display. On the right hand side here, I have I'm not sure if I've changed this at all, but here are the settings. I've left, I've got it here as uh, clockwise on 180 on the first gyro. And down here, RX loss is switched on for the beacon and the rest of these I've left as switched on. On power and battery, I did not change any of this. I've left it as is. Failsafe, I've left it as is as well. Haven't changed it. I'm not using any presets. I'm basically using the defaults that are coming from the manufacturer of the flight controller. On pin tuning, I've changed a few things. So I noticed that I was getting a bit of uh, throttle oscillations as I punched the throttle. And uh, I've just uh, increased a bit of the D gains here. So 1.1 and also reduced the P and I gains down to 0.9. So after doing that, I noticed that the throttle oscillations reduced quite drastically. I'm by no means a uh, PID expert in tuning. So these are the minimal things that I've gone through to try and get the quad to fly smoothly for the first few flights. But I'm sure that uh, you guys can go out there and set this up a lot more refined to get it flying perfectly. So I might go through that and play around with some of these settings to get this to fly a bit better. Uh, going down here, I haven't really changed any of these here. I've left that as is on the right hand side. I've left most of this as default. I've got anti-gravity on. And down here, I like to have the VBAT SAG compensation to be on. And I'll put it on as 100. I like to have that on just to get a more even battery feel. And the motor output limit, I left it at 100. And one of the things that I noticed was that the throttle was very sensitive and the uh, motors with the high KVs was getting a l quite too high, too much of a power and uh, the, the RPMs were too high. So I was getting uh, hovering at about 5% of the throttle to 10%, which is very low in the throttle range to be hovering. So every time I punched it, it uh, shot up into the sky. So I didn't have much control in actually flying around and it was very difficult to actually manage. So you, you would have seen that in the video that I showed earlier. So to compensate for that, I'll show you later that I've actually reduced it in the rate profile. 
uh, but I've left it here for the motor output limit because when I do puncture the throttle to 100% all the way to the top, I do still want that power to be there uh, just in my flight style that I like to have. All right, so over to the rate profile settings. Here is my settings for the first one, rate profile, and I call it slow. I usually have three of them. I have slow, medium, fast, and also I have it at the default as well. So I'll just go through the first one, which is slow. And um, yeah, this is just the basic one that I usually fly with the slow rates. And uh, yeah, on the medium one and the high one, I then increase some of these, uh, these, um, these rates for the max rate so that I could get a little bit more agile flight. So here I'll just go through the slow one and you, you guys out there probably have your own flight styles and your rate profiles as well because it's very personal to everyone. So here I've got the center sensitivity at 120 for all of them, max rate 700 and the expo at 0.6. Over here you'll see the curve is actually curved like down like this or it's not a linear curve, it's not straight. And the way I've done that, uh, and, the, and there's a reason for it, I've set it up with a throttle limit of off, a throttle limit 100%, so that's pretty standard, no changes there. The throttle mid, I've put it at zero, and the throttle expo at 0.5. So what that allows is, at the low range of the throttle, it's a really slow curve to actually increase the throttle. So the more I increase the throttle at the low range, the throttle itself doesn't increase in percentage as high. So I get a more refined control of the throttle at the bottom. As it comes up to the middle, it's more the closer to the standard and then it increases a lot more as it gets to the end. So that allows me to then have that finer control at the bottom. In the middle, it's pretty standard and at the top, it then shoots up pretty high. So I've noticed for this quad, it does work well in my flight style and I do like it. It actually does all right. And I get kind of get used to that flight style with this quad. So this is how I've set it up and it, and it works well. Uh, that's another way to get around the, um, the throttle output at the top. I have been noticing that the motors only get a touch warm and I wouldn't even say it's warm. It's just noted, like you, you know that they were running. It wasn't anywhere warm in that you can feel that it's going to burn your fingers in any way. It's just lightly warm to the touch. So I haven't seen the motors get hot in any way or um, noted any damage that might occur. Over on filters, I've left this pretty much all standard. I'm sure that I'll go through a few more tuning things to get this to go, but I've left it as default and it does fly quite well. On the receiver side, because we're using Express LRS, on UART 1, I've set here the serial via UART as the receiver mode and also CRSF crossfire for the serial receiver provider. So you'll need to set these up for Express LRS. I've got the telemetry output to be on. And I think that's about it that I've set up in here. And it works fine after binding, setting up the bind phrase for the Express LRS receiver. Over here, you can see the modes that I set up. So I have the arm as the top left switch on my controller. And I do have a pre-arm as well, which is the bottom right one. So I like to have that pre-arm and I'm, my fingers are used to that. So I turn on the pre-arm with the bottom right switch and then the top left is the arm and that allows for the uh, quad to arm. The bottom right pre-arm is actually set. I've changed the switch out on the jumper T-light to be a momentary switch. So it, I'm flicking it and I let go, it goes back to the off position. Uh, that's not standard. Uh, and I do like that method because it seems quite safe to me that I never accidentally arm the quad. On the top right hand switch, I've set it as angle when it is down the bottom. And obviously if the switch is not on the bottom uh, pointing down, it's pointing up, then it's actually on acro mode. On the left hand side on the bottom, I have the one switch, you can see here, aux three, on for two, uh, two functions. Firstly, beeper, so when I flick it up, it goes into beeper mode and if I leave it on there as beeper mode and I arm it, it goes off beeper mode, the motors then go into an arm mode and then the turtle mode activates as part of the flip over cr after crash. So it, ac it acts as two, uh, 
functions for the one switch. So if I do need it to beep, then I just flick it on. And mo most likely if I am crashed and upside down, I'm wanting it to beep as well if I'm trying to look for it. And then if I'm trying to do turtle mode, then it's on the same switch. So I don't have to change any other switches to get it to work. On the adjustments, I don't change anything here. Nothing on servos. On the motor side, I've changed it to be motor direction is reversed, so, so I like to have the props spinning outwards. I've got it on D-Shot 300 and also bi-directional D-Shot is turned on. For these motors, which is the RCN Power 1003 motors, they are the small ones, so I've counted the poles, which are the magnets in the motors, and I've put it as 12 here. The rest of the settings, nothing else to really set, I've left it as standard. Here is my OSD setting. Uh, I don't like the way that they've set this OSD and how to configure it because every time you want to change something, you have to go down here, flick on the switch and then come back up here and see where it is and move it around. I'm not sure how you would change this to the old style where they had the left hand side of these options of the elements and in the middle you had the actual screen of what you will see and where to position the the actual elements and then on the right hand side you have these settings over here so I don't know how if they've allowed us to change it back to the original older beta flight configurator look and feel of this page but this is hard for me to set I have to go down switch it go back up again and it's a bit of a pain but I'll just show you what I've set up here and even then it doesn't fit on my screen as you can see uh, top left I've got Apex 2 as the craft name I've got the core temperature as well just to monitor that, just to make sure it doesn't overheat. Top right is normally my receiver, Express LRS receiver um, uh, decibels, so the how strong the signal is and also the link quality. In the middle is the warning of course, down here. On the bottom left I have the flight minutes and also the on minutes. In the bottom here I have the battery, single cell or the average cell um, voltage. And then the bottom right, the throttle value as well, just so that if anyone's interested in seeing what the throttle is like as I'm flying, you can see in the bottom right there. So the rest here, it's just pretty standard. Uh, the settings on the left hand side is basically what I've set at the top as you can see already. Here are the settings for the video transmitter and basically with the uh, smart audio setup, you can see I've already set it up and it's currently configured as race band, channel 1, uh, power level is at 100, and pit mode is uh, frequency 0, pit mode is off anyway, and low power disarm is off. So this is the VTX table that I got from the listing for the Happy Model Fusion V2 board. So basically I just copied and pasted that down here and used it. One thing to note is that the VTX table they gave has the label of 400 and the value of 26 here for the power level of the 300 that the max power level for the VTX goes up to. So I'm not sure if that really matters or not, but I don't like to blast it at high uh, power levels anyway, just to keep it cooler. I'm running it at 100 milliwatts right now. And for my backyard flights and little park flights, I think it's perfectly fine. I haven't lost any signal yet and I'm not penetrating through you know buildings and deep trees and such so this works fine for me so I've left it as is and for the rest of these pages here I haven't really set up anything no LED strips sensors tether logging the black box is actually built on in on the flight controller and I've already maxed it out because I haven't turned it off and I have, haven't been tuning it yet but when I do I'll erase it and then start monitoring the black box logs so that's pretty much it for my configuration in Betaflight for this quad. I hope that helped. If anyone can see anything that they find out about this or anything that I've actually set up incorrectly or can improve, happy to hear them in the comments. Please let me know because any, you know, in this hobby, we can help each other out and stuff like that, which is part of why I love it. Uh, so let me know if there's anything that you think that I could do. And if anyone's new to this, I hope this helped as well. Okay, so that brings us to the end of the Apex 2-inch build series. It's a great little quad to bash around the backyard as you can see, uh, or small parks and definitely is small enough to go unnoticed by people nearby.
If you're wondering, the quad comes up to about 62 grams without the batteries and with the two 1S Tattoo 300 milliamp hour batteries, it comes to about 79 grams. And I get about two minutes and 40 seconds consistently with them, landing at around 3.5 to 3.6 volts per cell. I really enjoyed doing this build and I'm glad I did. It was fun playing around with the new components, especially the Happy Model Fusion V2, which was quite interesting and I might use it in other builds. Just a reminder that all the components that I used in this build is down in the description below. They are affiliate links, uh, but they don't add any extra cost to you when you buy through these links, but I do get a small commission from it, which helps greatly with the support of this channel and allows me to do more of these videos for you. As always, please leave a comment uh, down below or any questions and suggestions, and I'd like to hear what everyone's thoughts are. Uh, so stay tuned for the next series, which will be a full build of the Speedy B B35 Cinewhip. So I hope I see you in that one. Cheers.